Mr. Tech Easy coming at you again uh, with a new video I'm showing you how to attempt to repair um, a MacBook Pro keyboard that um, has had spill damage to it. Um, I just got through pulling this keyboard out of a MacBook Pro. You can check out my video on how to remove the keyboard if you'd like because uh, they're fairly difficult. But here we've got a MacBook keyboard um, and the backlight assembly for it. Uh, as you can see, this thing is filthy, dirty, a lot of residue from whatever was spilled in it, a lot of hair, a lot of crumbs, whatever. I don't even want to know what else. But um, And here's the bottom of the keyboard. Um, one thing you want to make sure when you uh, pull these off, um, there's usually a little pad here uh, that the bracket goes on top of uh, when you're taking it apart putting it back together. Um, and uh, you know, need to make sure that this goes back in that spot if it comes off during this process or you can peel it off and put it back but uh, make sure that that goes there because that helps retain the keyboard in place so um, so anyways uh, standard uh, MacBook keyboard here um, as you can see right here as well uh, it's got all sorts of residue down underneath the keys are really sticky um, I can see it better here zoom isn't great on a GoPro but Anyways, there's all sorts of residue in here. Um, when cleaning this, we want to make sure to be careful of this power button here. Um, it's a really, uh, it's a really small cable. You just want to be gentle with that. So, as well as the original cable on it. Also on the backlight assembly, it's got a cable as well. You just want to be careful with that. So, um, so anyways, all that we need to do to do this. Um, and I found that this still really works 95% of the time as you can clean a MacBook keyboard with water. Um, however, uh, anytime I use water to clean it, uh, I also carry 99% alcohol. Um, you can usually get it at medical uh, places. Um, some drugstores might carry it, but it's not cheap. It's like 40 bucks a gallon, but, um, but you can reuse it to a degree. Uh, but it's not good for cleaning, but it's good for getting water out of something that's been cleaned. So, um, so we're actually going to clean this keyboard with some hot water, maybe some soap if it needs it. Um, and then afterwards, I'm going to dip it in an alcohol bath, which the alcohol bath will get into every nook, cranny, crevice, and everything in here and actually expel the water out of it. Um, and then at that point, it gets removed out of the alcohol bath and dried. Um, and... Uh, and I've almost always been successful. There's been, I think, one keyboard that still had problems afterwards. Uh, it had been a keyboard that had sat forever, so uh, with the damp, with the liquid damage, so it corroded over time. But um, so, anyways, what we need is hot water. Uh, you can just use tap water. And so we begin. I basically just kind of start soaking it. Well, I don't know, a lot of people are going to be like, Oh my God, you're putting water on your Mac. Well, you know what? We wouldn't be here if you hadn't spilled something in it in the first place, right? <laughs> so right now I'm just kind of soaking with hot water. Um, I wouldn't use like boiling water or anything. It might dissolve the residue faster, uh, but it could also possibly warp the plastic keys and all that sort of stuff so and a lot of that residue is already just dissolving right off whatever stickiness it was so you could also let this soak for a little bit um, and the big key here is to try to get it dry it as fast as possible after working on it, so. I'm gonna set that down for a second. I'm gonna kinda do the same here now with this. Now with this, this actually has several layers to it. Um, now, I'm very familiar and I've done this numerous times. I've actually been successful with uh, pulling the layers apart and putting them back together. You just gotta make sure if you do that, they kind of go exactly how they were before. Otherwise, your backlighting looks funny on the keyboards. It doesn't line up with the keys properly, or some areas look darker than others. That's really important that all this stuff lines up good. 
Um, this one's actually coming really clean. I don't think I'm going to have to pull it apart, but sometimes they might need it. You can see these are dots I showed in my video that I pulled the keyboard out of. Um, they were actually white before because those parts hadn't had spills, but as you can see, when they get wet, they turn red or pink. Um, and that's what's happening with these. But we're intentionally doing this part. So any of these parts that pull apart easily like this, run water in between them too in case there's hair, dust, or anything like that in between them. Just try to get as much of that stuff out of there as possible. I'm just kind of peeling this part off, making sure Again, this part's pretty easy to line back up and get on top and it isn't as critical as this piece right here that has all the keys cut out of it. Um, this is the part that blocks the light properly from the back bit, so... If you do decide to peel this off, do it gently. Um, and don't go beyond this part right here. This is where the LED part is that actually lights up for that cable. because they're actually pressed on in those spots, so. so here we're to this edge. And again, I'm just trying to rinse out anything that I can. Now it's okay to get a toothbrush in here and kind of scrub on some areas too if it needs it. You really don't that much on this piece right here because it's all pretty much flat. Um, However, on the keyboard, sometimes you might, just to get in between the keys. Um, you can do this as long as you're semi-gentle. You'll get a feeling for how the keys are, because the keys could pop off of their little brackets, um, which isn't a huge deal as long as you don't break the brackets. But So I'm just kind of going through and scrubbing in between each of the rows. And even all, like right now, I, can, I can't see any of that sticky residue. Um, but keep in mind that it's still very possible that it's up underneath the edges of the keys and in the brackets. So um, it's good to, when you're going through, press the brackets down. That way it kind of works anything that might be stuck in the brackets. You know, it also wouldn't be a bad idea to use a spritzer with some power to kind of get underneath there. Letting it warm up. The thing to do here, as I'm doing here, is go at it from this side so it kind of gets these angles from this side of the keys and brackets. And then I'm do it again from this angle. And then switch and do it from this angle. And then last, switch and do it from this angle. You can do the back as well. And there we have it. I think this one's about as clean as it's going to get. I just kind of try to shake dry it as much as possible. And then get a towel. Just kind of pat dry. As much of that water off of there as you can.
any of you who watched my video on how to remove this, obviously my uh, permanent marker that I use to mark all my uh, spots where the screws back into place, half of these have wiped off with this cleaning. Uh, so obviously I didn't use a very good permanent marker. Usually they'll stay on there after the cleaning, but um, the other thing I'll sometimes do is lay it flat on the towel. Just kind of push down from the back, kind of expel some of the extra water, and then the same from this side. Again, just trying to get as much of the water out of there naturally as possible. Same with this now. So now that I'm at that point with that, I've got those about as hand dried as good as I could. Um, there's really no point in taking a dryer to these or anything at this point. Um, at this point now, if you're doing an alcohol bath, now is the time to do the alcohol bath. Um, basically, you just need to put it in a, uh, I like to use a flat or a rectangular uh, Tupperware bin um, that I can drop these down inside of um, and let them soak for a couple of minutes, shake them around a little bit. That way uh, the alcohol has a chance. The alcohol will actually get into areas that water's out, expel the water, and the alcohol will fill it. Um, and then when we're done, we'll actually pull it out of the alcohol bath and let it drip dry overneath, over the... Uh, over the alcohol bin um, just to get the last of it out and then at that point um, we can hair you know use a blow dryer or just let it sit for a day to let all the alcohol um, dry out of it uh, you could also put it in a uh, oven on the lowest temperature uh, um, metal side down usually it's best to prop it up onto something a um, couple of baby food jars that way it's not uh, nothing on I'll be melting or anything like the cables so um, anyways at this point I'm gonna go ahead and give this an alcohol bath but uh, that's how you clean a keyboard with water that's had liquid damage on it um, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, cleaning on the alcohol part of it and get all this water out of here and then I'll finish doing my uh, how to remove a keyboard and reinstall a keyboard on a MacBook Pro all right, thanks guys. So here we are back. This is the uh, alcohol bath I was talking about given the components here. Again, I've just got a Tupperware bin uh, with some alcohol on the bottom of it. I've just placed the keyboard in there. Just kind of slosh it around to let all the alcohol get in there. Uh, the same with this piece right here. Uh, now this is 99.9% .9 alcohol. Um, you got to be very careful with this stuff. It's extremely flammable. It's not good to breathe in for a long period of time. So uh, if you're going to use this, make sure you do it in a well-ventilated room. Um, but really, this is about all it needs. It doesn't need a lot. Once that alcohol gets in there, it pretty much uh, gets the water out. Um, I don't recommend touching this with bare hands, you should wear rubber gloves, but uh, even just for picking it up like I just did. But, anyways, um, so once, that done, once that's done, this is the point now uh, where I need to drip dry and kind of shake it off in there a little bit. Um, again, you should be wearing rubber gloves, I know I'm not, but I've done this a lot, and blah 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 blah. Done. Alcohol is very weird. I don't know if you can see around my thumb here how it's already starting to dry. I blow on it. starts drying pretty quickly so
So anyways, that's the alcohol bath I was talking about. Um, and I talked to you guys earlier about being careful about the, uh, uh, that little, um, the little piece on the back of the keyboard, the little uh, cushion part. There it is right there. It did end up coming off. Um, so I put it right there with the ring that goes for the power button as well. So, so uh, now I'm just going to blow dry those um, to get all the alcohol out of them. Uh, and then I'll probably let them sit for a couple of hours just to make sure they get completely dry uh, before I install. Um, so kind of at this time now, uh, I'm going to continue on with cleaning up the... Uh, bottom side of the keyboard and make sure all that's clean before or the keyboard frame before I go ahead and put it back in so uh, now I'm gonna go dispose of all this uh, alcohol and um, don't just dump the stuff down your drain I have a bin that I pour it back into but um, anyways I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll get back to uh, shooting the video putting the keyboard back in thanks guys